Hi everyone, today it's not actually me talking. We've actually got a guest presentation from Nicholas from Aussie Money Man. If you haven't heard of him but you're interested in all things financial, definitely go check out his YouTube channel. I've been watching it for a while now. He also runs a website. I've posted the link in the description below. He gives lots of free factual information regarding personal finance, wealth creation, investment, passive income, etc. One thing that I've found with Nicholas is that he certainly embodies the entrepreneurial spirit. He's a lot more of an entrepreneur than I will ever be. In today's presentation, he departs a little bit from his financial roots and gives us his thoughts and opinions on university education and why it probably isn't a great idea for everyone to attend. Anyway, without further ado, Nicholas from Aussie Money Man on Is University a Mistake? Reports will tell you the number of young Australians heading to university has never been higher. So surely this is due to an increase in the need for technical jobs or an overall need for those with university degrees. Well, not quite. Other reports will tell you that over 60% of those heading to university will receive little to no benefit from their degrees. So why is this and why do we keep going despite this being the case? Of course there is no one answer to this, but you can be bloody well sure there are a few distinct and major factors. Number one, and likely one of the most significant, is the university's desire to make as much money as possible. In the end, they are a business, and what do businesses do? They make money. So for a university, how is this done? Well, by having more students. This leads me to the first point of why students keep heading to university despite where it is often of little to no benefit to the student, and often, in fact, to their detriment, something we'll discuss in a second. The simple answer? Because universities want you to. Universities spend absorbent amounts of money each year assuring that not only students feel like they need to go to university, but that employers, parents and other relevant decision makers think so as well. So how do they do this? Well they try to look public, they fabricate entry ranks to create what in many degrees in universities case is a simple superficial demand surplus or supply shortage. They create more and more useless degrees to appeal to a wider audience and why? Because the more people they can appeal to, the more people they enrol and the more money that they make. Are these degrees useful? Likely not. Do the universities care? Absolutely not. They target the young. They are targeting those that are likely leaving the institutionalized lifestyle that is school for the first time. A time where they are extremely susceptible to peer pressure and overall manipulation, not only by the billion dollar industry that wants nothing more than to suck their pockets dry, but also by the parents, families and friends that have also been as well as equally impacted by the superficial need for degrees created by these universities. One thing I hear way too often is people celebrating acceptance into university as if it was that it was 30 years ago when acceptance into university was in fact a difficult feat and where yes it did offer a likely path to prosperity. We know however today that is simply not the case, at least for many, it is a sentence to a $30,000 debt which is an entire and extremely significant issue in of itself, not to mention the three years in what is one of the most critical times for a young person's life, one where they are at their most physical and cognitively able. Young people are tricked into thinking they are accepted based on merit, but rather they are accepted based on their ability and willingness to pay upwards of $30,000. Okay, so we understand more and more Australian students are opting into attend university, that many of those attending are likely receiving little to no benefit, and why this is occurring. But still the question remains of what impact does this have? We can start with the statistic that 1 in 5 drop out of university and on average spend $12,000 to do it. We can look at the extreme and unnecessary stress and anxiety people would have during high school with the stress to get accepted into university, the stress and anxiety had once within university, trying to pass exams in topics and subjects they simply do not need to take. They are not interested in, something that has been shown to be an extremely important factor in success in anything, but even more so in learning, studying and proving that learning in a test environment, and not even mentioning those that simply do not have the aptitude to study. In fact, this is an entire issue of itself. Statistically, with the percentage of students heading to university, a fair chunk of them simply do not even have the aptitude needed to pass a degree, or at least a degree that is going to be of any relevance. So what effect does this have? Well, this is contributes to the number of dropouts mentioned earlier, the number of students opting in for less difficult and thereby less relevant degrees, and the amount of stress these students experience trying to pass exams they simply cannot take, or at least not without an unreasonable level of preparation. Another impact is one that may be often used to rebuttal arguments such as mine here today, and that is that university graduates are paid higher. But why is this? Because they are more specialised and fairly deserve a higher salary? Well, sometimes, certainly, absolutely. 
But in many cases, this is simply driven by the fact that we think it should be. This is a superficial need shared by students and employees alike, despite no hard evidence showing the mere possession of a BA to be in any way useful. Of course, this is fabricated again by the universities. And of course, there's the main impact, the impact we were all expecting. It results in young people wasting three years of their life, which carries with it a huge opportunity cost, getting in debt before many of them even have their first job for at least their first full-time job, and experiencing a lot of unnecessary stress. In fact, with this being said, I would go as far to say students would be better off buying two $80,000 luxury vehicles than to go to university unnecessarily, where they will reap little to no benefit. This is not to mention the potential benefits that could be had should they go out and get a job or start a business and invest that money. So why is no one talking about it? Well they are, but it's easy to be drowned out by the big guys, which of course are universities. Let us look at what is arguably one of the most intelligent and successful men in the world. Elon Musk. He said himself he does not care if his employees have a degree. In fact, many of them don't. Can it be useful? Of course. Is it often useful? Probably not. Do we have too many students going to university at the moment than actually needed? Absolutely. There's of course the saying that A students work for B students, C students run the businesses, and D students dedicate the buildings. So what about international students, which make up between 20 to 30% of all students studying at Australian universities at any given time? Well, all that was said and more. Universities make upwards of $7 billion a year from international students alone. The Australian universities, despite an apparent conflict of interest, were given the right to approve students' English ability in order to come to Australia to study on a student visa. The Australian universities can clearly manipulate this, and this is exactly what they are doing. This of course has a completely unfair and unreasonable impact on the international students coming, the Australian students studying with them, Australia as a whole, while of course only benefiting the universities. So what can we do about it? Well we can take rights out of a clear conflict of interest from universities, such as that mentioned earlier regarding universities' ability to determine and approve a student applying to study in Australia on a student visa's English ability to study here in Australia. We can educate Australian students on the usefulness of degrees, or in this case, lack thereof, the other options available to them, and just the overall real-world evidence and benefits of a degree. Further, we can educate employers and other relevant decision makers on the real-world evidence and value of a degree, similar to that what it would do for a student. Overall, I think this goes much deeper with issues surrounding cheating within universities, the scam that is university rankings, the idea that you'll get an education from a better school, or that your university grades matter. Yes, university is important for many, but for a huge number of students attending, which is only growing, this may just be the biggest mistake of their life.